Don't ask me how I did it, but I did it. I got more ice. <laughs> I stopped at home. <coughs> it's so cold. Yeah. It's black hoodie. I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, y'all. It's winter in this bitch. As you can see outside here, we got the dandruff laying on the grizzly, but uh, today we're gonna take a drive. We're gonna get some coffee, have a little coffee talk. We're gonna break down some psychoanalysis of a song that I've released down by a river. So let's head on out and uh, for safety's sake, before we go, let's make sure that we're buckled up. <laughs> ah, walk sign is on for all crossings. Extra pop, super stiff collars today. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're on route. Uh, definitely got to get a few uh, errands today, a couple AA runs, definitely to run. But uh, if we're gonna have uh, a little more Energizer Bunny in this bitch for this conversation, we got to go see a hoe named Timmy. Timmy Hose, Canada's favorite treat. It's coffee. That's where you get coffee, donuts. I think we've established this before. Actually, <laughs> I did a video, a complete and total like lunch splurge in this same hat, perhaps around this time last year. And uh, it was a great time. It was when I actually, uh, it was when I actually discovered that uh, hash browns dipped in chili is the fucking shit. Okay, <laughs> that's when that happened. That being said. If there was a little cheese in that chili, would have been a Canadian chef. But anyways, even though it's fucking freezing out, we're going to get iced coffee because that's the only way I drink it. You drink it however you want. See, your life is your oyster. Oh, the line is way too long. We gotta go to an alternate Timmy's. And see, that's the good thing about Timmy's as well, is there's a Timmy's every couple blocks where I live. So you got options. But when the line is like that, it's a nay no, bro. Gotta stay away, stay key town. Cause to be honest, if you think about like, how much, like when you're in a line like that, like, like how much gas is that? And gas right now, hot commodity. Really though, I've been preserving my trips. Like I make my trips worth it. Every time I leave the house and I'm driving, the trip has to be like, we're getting, everything we need and then we're trying not to drive for as long as we can possibly not drive <laughs> type shit type swole looking thick boy in the fucking i swear i've been losing weight nah it's just because i'm i'm a hoodie I, like i'm hoodie plus uh, a winter workman's with fleece fleece filled a fleece filled winter workman fleece filled winter workman I have a sneaking suspicion that this one's gonna be fucking rammed up the butt as well and that I'm gonna pull the old uh, just go inside move because seemingly like nobody just goes inside <laughs> usually. So really to avoid the line, you just go inside and you get your coffee like. And my suspicions were entirely correct. It is fucking a shit stain over here too. Lines absolutely nightmarish. We're going in. Reminiscent of last year. The beaver bandit is back. <laughs> oh, fuck. I can't. Fuck. It's very, it's very, it's really hard. Oh, I'm foggy. Oh, fuck. I look like I'm going to rob this place. And we're back. Took literally like two minutes to go inside. <laughs> so, so, so much more superior of a move. All right, now that we've established the coffee, uh, can I get a witness to peep me on some pimp shit, okay? I need to know, and I know this is preferential choice, and I don't really fault the worker, per se. It's whatever, like, it is what it is. And I know that ultimately this person's doing it for my benefit, because they want me to have more bang for my, my buckaroo. They, they want me to have more coffee in my drink. They want me to have, you know, more product, more 
of of the drink because ice takes up a shit ton of the cup right so they you know he's looking out for my buck so shout out to him that being said in my preferential choice of an iced coffee so that meaning that like there's ice in the coffee we're maybe rocking we're rocking a top float of like six cubes now once again preferential choice i like a three-quarter fill of ice mostly coffee splash of milk sweetener right let me know how, how you do it i just it doesn't feel like an iced coffee when there's like barely any ice am i wrong in saying this i don't think so because it's my preferential choice and once again he was looking out for my for, for really for my for for giving me more so you know these are things in life we're going to talk about more things in life down by this river meet you there we're already together but you know what i mean You'll observe up ahead that building, not the house, but the one behind it, the, the, the yellowish one. That's where I entered the portal that I entered this this world in. That's the hospital. I was thrown out of a, a womb into this world. And then across the street is the church that I went to like twice in my entire life. <laughs> I think around this time of year, Christmas time. And I actually, I think I might've eaten the, the bread of Jesus what's that stuff called when you eat the bread of Jesus and drink the wine of Jesus the blood of Jesus I did that there I think once or twice and uh, you know then I found myself under sketchy bridges later in life so probably should have followed Jesus that's all I'm saying and she is frozen over she's glass out there she is glass Okay, so we are situated by the river with a nice backdrop of an old train. Don't ask me how I did it, but I did it. I got more ice. <laughs> I stopped at home. <coughs> it's so cold. Yeah. All right, so the goal and agenda of this video is to have a serious chat <laughs> uh, about one of my songs in the weirdest hat apparently but uh i gotta hook up the ox do i have to hook up the ox no i don't fuck the ox no i don't need the ox i'm just gonna insert snippet of the song real quick here just the intro maybe 20 seconds so you can establish what it is maybe you've listened to it maybe you haven't if you haven't you can listen to it after this chat the link will be down in the below pinned in the comments <laughs> that cultivated a certain kind of culture resulting in altercation false with their statements they're giving us ultimatums the pulse of a nation dictated by people with multiple faces repulsive ain't it it's bullshit we need to revolt to overthrow yo we've seen this before but you know i think a thousand uh, maybe just you know 1.5 k people or something like that listen to it i don't know where it's at now but you know that means that probably some of you watching this video have listen to that freestyle as i call it and uh the reason i call it a freestyle is because it has no structure like it, it you know it was written now i didn't write it down because somewhere along the way when i first started writing and maybe some of you who create lyrics music whatever you can attest to this you first start by like probably writing things out and then you become so proficient in the actual craft of that at least for me and because i have a really good memory i've just always had a really good memory i'm able to like start i start the first sentence which leads to the next sentence next sentence and then you kind of get you get like four bars and then that 
you you recite that once or twice boom it's locked in and then it, it just starts to to snowball into a thing so in this particular freestyle uh the once again i the reason why things are called freestyles nowadays the olden times freestyle was literally like go up on stage like like eminem and shit and back in the day it was like you're really going off the top you might have some preconceived notions and ideas but you're kind of going off the top but that's battle i guess now freestyle is like it's considered a john so a john like a j-a-w-n a john being like one long thought form there's no chorus there's no bridge there's no verses it's just one long john so i think that's why nowadays they're called freestyle right but as per this uh this john or freestyle if you will um I guess the reason I I want to talk about it is because for well for a multitude of factors. A I wrote it quite some time ago, but the first like half of it really still applies even more now today than ever before, I think. Um I also want to touch on the idea that like I personally, if you're someone who writes or creates or you know, like sometimes I don't know it's like it's almost like and this is why i believe in in um like flow state divine download like why your brain is in in antenna to something higher than your, like your higher self or something feeding you when when you're like this it's like i when i when i wrote this i can remember, remember the day completely vividly i was uh i was in my bedroom i had you know my one roommate i was in my bedroom uh this is probably my third or fourth fourth year living in toronto probably and i was in my bedroom and i think i got the start of a beat played and it wasn't the beat that i put this song on it just was something and it sparked the first couple lines and then from there it just i just this outpouring of almost a in the first half it's almost politicized and in the second half it's a really very uh like a personal thing that i think i was trying to reconcile and resolve in myself and i think on either side of this whole thing the the deconstruction or the the, anal, the analytical side of of the whole thing can be maybe useful to you in your life or for some people because there was this weird lesson about like familial detachment and things that i had to learn and and appreciate appreciating you know flying leaving the coop and like growing up and, and needing to to have you know your solo time in life where you didn't have those relationships weighing on you so much and you needed to kind of go out on your own and then coming back to understanding that okay no these relationships are super valuable and stuff like that so i don't know it's just a progressionary thing over time but uh i guess yeah so so i just think it's interesting to break down things almost like like bar by bar and so the first half was just it's very evident since even years ago that my almost anti or my anti disestablishmentarianism or whatever my my whole attitude relative to that to the world has been present from a long time ago but that's because like i said like i've said before i've just been switched on to seeing th like the world for really what it is and i know that it's it's nice to to put your blinders on and just try to live your life and protect your peace because there's a certain level of uh comfort found in that that's what they say ignorance is bliss and opening yourself up to the ideas of this crazy world that we live in it almost infiltrates like a parasite and then it starts to bother you so you're like i don't even want to really involve this stuff in my life like you kind of want to just shut everything out and just kind of suck in and live your life so i get that but uh i guess you know that's a long-winded way to say to start into the breakdown of this whole thing now it starts like this so look at the cases of cults that cultivated a certain kind of culture resulting in altercation that's why i titled it altercation because i thought that was the most important thing so you know look at the cults so cults being a group of people with a similar mindset uh trying you know to push an agenda more or less like a cult cults are everywhere cults can be 
you know that's why you have a cult following like a band has a cult following or you know we we heavily relate cults to charles manson and all these occult things but really a cult not occult but a cult can be at really any group of people right it can be and in in our scenario and in this song scenario it more relates to governmental cults being the left and the right and the this and the that and even the overthrowing overshadowing like r ruling class type type of stuff but really it's just a faction of people with an agenda with like a group think mentality so but in this scenario so it's like look at the look at the cases of cults that cultivated a certain kind of culture so the culture that we live in right resulting in altercation so what do i mean by that well we can see it in today's world so deeply like we're the, the, just the, the division we're always at odds with each other we're always in an altercation we're always someone's battling somebody for something and that's because the world is so goddamn complex right we're all from different there's just so much there's there's the classes uh there's just ideologies beliefs you know religion science da, 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 right um even when it comes to like communism or capitalism or socialism, like these are all different groupthink ideas and everybody thinks theirs is the best, right? So it's like resulting in altercation. False with their statements, they're giving us ultimatums, the pulse of a nation dictated by people with multiple faces. So in that sense, um, false with their statements. So back in the day like i already like that the the media deception so false with their statements right it's everything is narrativized to get you to go with them right but they're saying what's 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 convenient they're saying what what works for them how their agenda gets pushed now is it backed by truth probably not right we know this how many times have we seen this time and time again so um false with their statements they're giving us ultimatums so now this is more prevalent than ever. It's like, if you don't do this, then you won't be able to do that, right? So that's an ultimatum. If you don't, then you won't. But if you do, then you can. So they're giving us ultimatums, the pulse of a nation. So now the pulse of our, our nations, almost globally right now, we're seeing this in Australia and whatnot, the pulse of the nation is trying to be dictated by these people with multiple faces. They're wearing masks right they're pushing pushing their agenda through their deception telling you these these truths right but are they truths not usually repulsive ain't it to me it is to me it's repulsive so it's bullshit we need to revolt seeing it in australia right now and many other countries european countries uh we need to revolt to overthrow yo we've seen this before and we have nuremberg 2.0 coming up we've seen this before because history repeats itself no misery just peace and health all we want right no misery just peace and health this isn't me i've been in hell i'm physically a demon now right so it's the, it's these principles of, of these of the society that's making me become something that i don't want to be so i'm physically a demon now and I want to say namaste, but even on my calmest day, the stress that I accommodate, it doesn't feel commonplace, right? It doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel right. How many of us are living in these lives? We're just like, oh my God, like how another day of this shit, right? And it's seemingly more prevalent than ever now. And I want so, and it doesn't feel commonplace. I'm going to go kamikaze, so kamikaze, crazy. I just used it for rhyme form. Kamikaze, and you could call me crazy if you want to taste right so you could call me crazy from my viewpoint as per what i can see in this world but that's fine i'll give it back right to you with my factual observations about what is actually occurring right i'm not i'm not worried i'm i'm i'm, I'm not worried to, to 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 say how how i see it right if you want to taste and then now this and this all of a sudden in that in that flow state in that form of when you're writing and things just start coming through you it just pivoted and this is the other part the other half of 
of of this or maybe even it's it's two thirds is uh my mama say she loved me i don't believe it though to me it's not feasible my heart is dark and freezing cold and even though she conceived me it's inconceivable to me it's unbelievable really so that chunk right there basically represents when you're when you I, this is something i was personally going through and when when you leave like i left home like i left my like i went away right and when you're living at home and if you're lucky enough to have relationships with your parents and because not everybody gets that in life not everybody is lucky enough to have parents who who you know love consider take care of and adore them it's just it's not the reality reality of the world i was lucky enough to have them so i don't take it for granted but there's a certain level of like expectation in main, in maintenance of these relationships uh with your your parents and your siblings and things that can start to i don't know it just everybody knows that your the, the people closest to you can drive you nuts the quickest is really what i'm trying to say and uh that's also a time juggling thing too right like you like you have to allot time to maintain these relationships and it's a lot of relationships to maintain especially if you factor in like aunts uncles grandparents da, 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 cousins like it's like how much time do i have it's like we all have to live lives we gotta go make money and shit like we like there's shit to do but yet everybody is also feels slighted it's like well i don't hear from you and da, 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 da. and that can start to make you like whoa like this is a lot on my plate and also you start to go like this isn't this supposed to be a two-way street well how come i'm the only one driving down it or how come you're the only one commenting on like me not driving down it but it's like i don't see you driving down it either so that's a whole whole thing but anyways so you know i left home and for the first time like i was able to deta to be detached from that direct vicinity of these relationships and i fell into like uh just i wouldn't even communicate with like my family for long periods of time months half a year like type thing like call home a couple times a year you know whereas you used to talk and see these people all the time but at the same time you're 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 at a coming of age point in your life where you're like I need to figure out and understand who I am and I need to figure out who I am independently without these people around me, without their influence in my mind and all these expectations from them. I need to figure out who I am. Right. And then I'm also trying to go to work and, and, you know, I'm socializing and meeting new people. I'm working two jobs. I'm, you know what I mean? Like roommates and all these hangouts and shit. And, but then the guilt creeps in of like, oh shit like i'm uh you know i'm i'm just like i'm probably letting these people down i'm probably hurting people by not staying in contact and see so, so that that guilt, guilt starts to weigh on you so in that moment i'm thinking about how i haven't talked to my mom in x amount of time but it's almost a relief in that sense because i can get to really truly know who i am and i have freedom and time to, to figure these things out at the expense of like probably her sadness right so that's the whole it's not feasible uh, uh it's unbelievable really and then so that led to the next part is so have an interview with the inner you and you'll soon realize that you're a sinner too self-centered and cynical isn't it cool in the end we're all fucking identical so it's like that chunk is for me to basically say like when you take that time to 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 uh to to go inward right to um to almost meditate on self um you know you'll 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 be able to to analyze that yeah like <laughs> you aren't as you know maybe as perfect as you think you are and maybe you are a little selfish maybe you are a little cynical about the world maybe you know like and that's a catch-22 in itself because in this world that we live in you have to be like you you need to to live life to a certain degree for yourself in even order to succeed in anything to be able to find the means to, to provide for self and for others 
So, but then people meet you with all this guilt about selfishness and you're like, well, I can't be self-sacrificial all the time because then what gets done for me in my life and how is that going to be beneficial to anybody else, society, family, whoever, if I'm this constant like pleaser and appeaser and like I won't have time, you know what I mean? So you're always juggling that, that inner, that, that dichotomy of that, that conflict. So, you know, have an interview with the inner you, soon realize you're sinner too. And in the end, we're all fucking identical. So I meant that in two ways. So in the, in the end, we all die, right? No one gets out of this game alive. We all die. We have that in common, right? But also in this moment of my, my realization of the fact that we're also just all consciousness in a flesh vessel having a usury experiential you know ex experience in this realm in this temporal temporary 3d realm right so i was i was uh locked in or you know shown that it, in, my, in my early 20s i was just that's when i had my switch on. i was like wait a minute like these names, these numbers, the, the, the colors, these races, everything that you're identified with, like on your cards and all that. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's an idea. That's a character, right? The, these are labels, but it's not who you are. It's not who we are. We are all the same thing. We're, we're, we're consciousness having our own experience individually yet somehow collectively but when you cease to exist then you're th this whole world ceases to exist technically because you're not there to observe it right so in the end we're all fucking identical so in this pivotal moment having that pivotal moment where you realize this in that pivotal moment everyone's juggling some less than minuscule omens we're all we all have our problems we're all juggling our problems we have our good days are bad days. We have fun, but we have shit. So less than minuscule omens, battling demons. In my case, like you didn't phone home and you didn't text back, but didn't notice how it affects dad. Sisters and mother all missing their brother and son. There's distance among us. You don't fix it. You duck and you run. Because that's what I was doing at the time. I knew that my relationships at home with the people that will most show up for me when all shit hits the fan were, were suffering due to my own inability to, to face, face up and own up to the fact that I was being subpar as a brother, as a son. And I had that self-awareness, but I couldn't, I couldn't face the guilt but I also selfishly wanted to become who I was trying to become. And in order to do that, I didn't want exterior influence. I didn't want to be told you can't and, 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 you know, diminishing beliefs. I needed to, to try to become me like who I'm trying to become. Uh, so, uh, yeah, sisters and brother all missing their brother and son. There's distance among us. You don't fix it. You duck and you run. So I was ducking and running. Uh, even from also, and this was a hard one for me, like with my grandparents too, for a long time. And they're like, they, they were so, uh, supportive and necessary and crucial in my, in my, in my growing up years and like the best memories and just always the caretakers and just, you know, like really great people. And so there's that guilt, right? Take, take a look at just what you become. And this is God speaking to me now. Uh, so take a look at just what you become my son you are scum now look what you did you little jerk didn't call for two months think it didn't hurt oh sure sure you've been at work and that's more important than a woman that give you birth so in that it's like once again that's that whole the push and pull of like relationships but also you got to go do this stuff you have to survive and this is your first time really surviving on your own in your younger you know your your young adult years. Like you have to provide wholly and fully for self. You got to make the rent. You got to make the, all the bills. Da, 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 da. Like you got to show up for all the shifts that you signed up for. And at the time working for me, I was always working like two jobs, shit like that. So, so that's God being like, look what you become scum. And then, um, 
and then so the the, the the dichotomy the devil creeps in so but but life's expensive and you got to make a living don't be so sensitive it's not going to make a difference and it's god that makes you livid so side with me connive and scheme to find your dreams you have to follow my beliefs and i be, and i believe if you do that come to the dark side you could quit working that part-time the part-time on top of the full-time stop living those hard times and live that good life yeah what could that look like and then that's pretty much the end of, end, end of it but and then i just say i mutter at the end i'm ready to find out and actually i should say at the top of the song i start with that little melody ready to sell my soul to the devil right because nothing ever goes my way and lately i've been on that level not willing to go but one more day so that's like, I'm not willing to go one more day with, with this, like, with this struggle. Like, I just, I want to give in to that. You know, it's like, that's when people say like, oh, he sold his soul. Like for all the riches and the, and the, the material things in this realm. And that's something that I'm, that I'm, that I'm personally juggling with i think it's always been in me to some degree i think it's in all of us we have a dualistic sense of self we have that that altruistic kind-hearted good-natured person but then we also have that selfish um a little bit you know like indulgent and and, and needing wanting desire and those things that drive and and i think those are it's like w one is the right hand path one is the left hand path back to positive negative one zero binary it's like this du dualistic sun moon it's these decisions it's like which are you going to take are you going to walk the narrow path the more pure godly path are you going to live humbly and be more simple in your pursuits and and be a servant in your community to just to just play a small role and and you know live a a, a more even keel life or are you going to try to in this material realm that's temporary are you going to try to acquire and obtain and step on people and you know and promote almost indignant uh things because if we look at pop culture it's like what's hot it's like you you look at the popeyes commercial and it's like megan the stallion shaking that fatty ass that's been injected and it's like haughty sauce and it's just like you go on tiktok and it's just it's just this barrage of of scantily clad like shaking it all and and uh it's like that lower carnal self the 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 you know guns violence bling bling money phones <laughs> you know all you, you know, my wrists on freeze like shit like that that's like a lower carnal self that's a that's a desire self that's a that's a lower mind like these things are gonna fulfill me um you know sex drugs alcohol all that stuff right and you know i've totally i I've been all up in that shit, right? You know, I've told these stories and I, uh, I don't know. I, and I, I just, I've, at the time, like, you think it's cool, but then you get conflicted sometimes. You're like, what? Like, why did I, why did I think that was cool? Because the world was telling me that shit was cool. And I, mean, I think it, maybe it's just a coming of age thing. Maybe you just have to grow out of certain things. I mean, I think that's probably what's happening inside me now. But at the, t at the time, when I wrote that, that was a huge internal conflict for me, those things, you know, seeing the way that the world is and also feeling guilty about these things about, you know, my desires and then even how my desires factor into how the world is and the fact that I don't really fuck with how the world is too much, too often. I'm like, oh, it's corrupt as shit. But then it's like, well, that's because all these people have these crazy desires, right? These, um, these overriding, overbearing materialist too much desires right and you know in that time in my life that's what i you know just wanting to succeed massively in all the in these these artistic arenas in like in what what i presented to you here the right in these writings in in, in these in these johns and these raps and these songs like because you see uh, you know you see people living the good life once it hits for them but then you have to remember it's like this is a temporary existence and uh you know there is a possibility that that your eternity can be 
perhaps uh, your ticket to eternity can be defined off what it is that you do here, here, for your time here. And I feel like I'd rather bank on that than to try to indulge in this material realm in, 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 the, in this insatiable sense. Because that's what it becomes. When you start chasing one, like when you start chasing the bag and, and, and the next car and the next this, and the next that, it just, it becomes an insatiable chase, right? I, and I, I don't think it lends to contentment. Contentment being possibly the closest thing to happiness you'll ever get. Happiness has been hallmarkized. It's been sold to us once again, like a carrot. It's like, if you just get this, it zombifies it's and then you'll be happy then you'll be happy well no you get it and it's like well i'm not still not happy i still feel empty because contentment is found in fulfillment and fulfillment is found through living a unique life through your self-expression through who you really 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 are like when you sit with self and go this is who i am this is where i live in my power and when you can live in that power and you can do in life what it is that fulfills you then that will get you closer to contentment Easier said than done in this world, though. Difficult task. So, you know, that's that's why I, I, I this was you know I was goofy in the beginning of the video, and I do like being goofy. I think comedy is one of the coolest things because I find that inside myself. I think comedy for me is a is a fulfilling, very enjoyable thing because making people laugh is to provide joy because that's being that's serving those you know what i mean it's you're serving people you're making people's lives better through comedy or through me talking like this maybe some of this has helped you to understand some things about yourself that's being a servant in this life to to to, to spread your your wisdom with people who maybe don't have it and it's the other thing too i've i've learned so much from other people like on YouTube, I listen to lectures and I, I study things and I look back in history and I try to understand, you know, where we came from, where we're going and where we're going seems crazy. That's a whole other video though. Um, but yeah, I just, I felt like this was an important video because there's a lot to unpack in those sentences that rhyme together in this compact form. But when you unpack it, it's like, how deep can you really take all that? How deep can that go? And it can go fucking deep. <laughs> And I guess I'll wrap this with saying that that's kind of what bothers me about really the space of, 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 of popular music is like, I understand that music is supposed to be a vibe. Like I get it. Like it's a good vibe, but also when, the, when there's no, like, just when there's no depth to, to anything, it's just a lot of what is pushed is what I'm saying. It's back to that basic carnal nature. It's the sex, the drugs, the alcohol, because we live in, in a commercial world. We live in a business sense world. We live in commodifying. We commodify humans. We commodify sex. We commodify everything. We commodify humans. We commodify sex. We commodify all that shit. And that's the shit that sells because so many people want to engage in that because they almost can't take the, uh, the deeper reality of what this world presents all that pain all that that hurt that self-awareness the, the the lack of success the suffering whatever it is it's like you just want to drown that shit out with your carnal desires and those being like i'll get drunk and so it can change or i can pop this pill or i can sniff this or i can i can watch this 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 porn or whatever like it's just it, it takes you out of that that your reality for that brief moment in time. But what the thing is off the back of, of that indulgence comes a repercussion. There's always a repercussion for that indulgent action. Cause that's the world we live in again, action, reaction. There's always a consequence for a decision that you makes for something that you indulge in. So that's what I'm saying is just about the, the music world It's like, nobody values that, that, that type of like a Bob Marley, for example, nobody values that type of that wisdom, that energy, that, that, that truth. Nobody values that anymore. The society that we live in is so goddamn corrupt in that sense. We're just, we're just pushing really simplistic, you know, consumer buy, 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 buy type shit. Right. 
because we live in a, in, a, in a commercial world. Um, yeah, so that it's and and that's what's crazy is like when people come, like when I when you release a, a piece of music and people come and you're like, they're like, you know, your music's fucking trash. It's like, okay, that's fine, that's cool because a it is, and here's why, because anything that doesn't sound good, like I don't like double pedal metal, right? It's just not for me. But do I go to those people's pages and go, this shit fucking sucks? No. I have the awareness to go, I don't like that, so I'm just going to go find the thing that I like. <laughs> but we live in a world of people just, they don't have that self-awareness. They're just like, they got to come through and be like, you fucking suck. It's like, yeah, but if this isn't for you, then it's just not for you. That being said, it's usually a person who likes, I don't know, like, who, who, who could I say? Like, just somebody who's a little more ignorant in, in what it is that they're presenting on beats, right? It's just because that's a person who's just living in that more carnal, simple desire self. And that's fine. It's, it's fine because we're not all supposed to be in the same level of awareness. We're not all supposed to be the same. That's what creates the uh, texture, you know, the texture in society. That's just, just what it, because otherwise, if we were all the exact same, life would be boring right but that being said conscious things in the mainstream they don't get pushed but there's a psychological reason for that because you can't sell conscious people all the shit because if you're kind of on zombie mode you just want all the shit so yeah i mean that's my perspective truth or my perspective and subjective truth. Um, hopefully, maybe you garner something from this. Uh, you can at me. I, I'm sure there's going to be something in here that probably makes somebody mad, but we can't avoid that anymore in life, right? Like I said, the culture <laughs> that cultivated a culture resulting in altercation, right? That's what I said at the top of the video. That's why this song is called Altercation. Because we are always at odds with each other. We are always going to either agree or disagree. The only difference is those who are a little bit more graduated understand that engaging in that disagreement doesn't get you anywhere. You just move on to where you fit. Where If the shoe fits, you wear it. So you go where you fit in the shoe. And then you just have a better time in life. Because if you fit in the shoe, then you're amongst like-minded people. You're in your cult. <laughs> Right, so it all comes full circle. It's all 360. Um, I can't believe I got all that ice and I only have one sip of this coffee. But, you know, sometimes if you get on a stream of consciousness, you get on a roll and your feet are fucking freezing and your windows are frosted, then you gotta, you gotta make hay when the bread head sunshine goes through your, you know what I mean? Consciousness happening through, like when I wrote this. So, anyways... I'm just like Jay-Z. I don't run anything down. I just think about it and memorize it. So I'm pretty much as good as Jay-Z. So it's like, there's that. Because everybody's always like, oh, Jay-Z doesn't write anything. Well, yeah, he does. He writes it from his divine download, but he doesn't write it down. He has the ability to remember it. It's not that important, impressive. I, like a lot of artists do it. They just get in the booth. They vibe the fuck out. They lay it on track and you're done. Like it just, it, it's not that impressive to be honest. But it is kind of embarrassing when dudes are holding their cell phone like, and then I fucked my bitch or your your bitch. I mean, I fucked her, your bitch, not what well, and mine too. But like, you know what I mean. Just fuck a bunch of bitches. All right, we'll end that one here. <laughs> Hopefully, you glean something from that. <laughs> Till the next one. You know what to do. Eat good, live well. <laughs> Stay true. <laughs>